in the last video, we discovered what seems like a problem with the Calvin cycle, that you have this big protein here, or enzyme, that facilitates the Calvin cycle. All of the molecules that are involved bond to this, and then it you know, twists and turns, and it jams things together so that they react properly. And we know what this is, the Rubisco, Rubisco enzyme or ribulose biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. And we know when the Calvin cycle operates properly, you'll have some carbon dioxide. You'll have some carbon dioxide attached on one part of this enzyme, and then you'll have some rube P, or maybe you could call it, or the, the proper word is uh, ribulose 1,5 biphosphate. And they're going to react. And then after they react, if the, everything with the Calvin cycle is going properly, they're going to react and form. They're going to be jammed together and then split into, for one molecule of that and one molecule of that, you're going to have two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate. Phosphoglycerate. Now in the last video, I started with three of these and three of these, so I ended up with six of these. But for every one of these, you end up with two of these. This is the proper Calvin cycle. Then these turn into your phosphoglyceraldehydes. These turn into two phosphoglyceraldehydes, or P-gals. P-gals. And then for every six that are of these that are produced, and maybe I should write a three here, a three here, and then I'll have six of these, and then I'll have six of these. And for every six of these that are produced, Five go back into the cycle to produce, so five p-gals or glyceraldehyde three phosphate, go back into the cycle to per, to produce the ribulose biphosphate, and one of them is uh, kind of our end product of photosynthesis that can be used to produce other carbohydrates. So one p-gal, and the whole problem we saw with the Calvin cycle is that Rubisco it does not only fix carbon dioxide. That instead of carbon dioxide, we can, might have an oxygen molecule. We might have an oxygen molecule that jumps in here, and it can also attach to the Rubisco uh, enzyme. And in that situation, the oxygen and the ribulose biphosphate uh, react. So if we said we had three ribulose biphosphates and three oxygens, instead of producing six phosphoglycerates, we're only going to produce five, five phosphoglycerates, and we're going to produce five phosphoglycolates, you know, which is that phosphoglycolates, which is that byproduct that gets processed later on. So it's this huge. And then these five, you're going to have five here. You can't have one left over. And then you're not going to produce anything. And doing this whole cycle, you have to use up a bunch of ATPs and NADHs. So this is a problem. If there's a lot of oxygen present, or even if there's just even a little bit of oxygen present, it's going to make this a little bit less, a little bit less efficient. Because every now and then, an oxygen is going to jump in when you when a carbon dioxide is needed to actually produce an actual carbohydrate in the end. So how do plants solve this problem? Well, one solution would be to operate to operate the Calvin cycle in an environment where there is very, very little oxygen, or you can almost say, no oxygen. And this is exactly what some plants do. And you're like, wait, how do I do that? Do they have to go to a planet where you know there, there's no oxygen? No, what they do is, and to to understand this, we'll have to understand a little bit of, of, of the actual makeup of the leaf of a plant. And it, that doesn't hurt, because everything we've been doing now has been biochemistry. It's nice to see leaves. So if I draw, you know, let's say that that is a leaf. That is a leaf right there. I can make it look nice like a leaf. That's a nice looking leaf. On your leaf's surface, and actually on both sides of it, you have these little pores, these little holes. These little holes on the leaf surface, they're actually surrounded by these things called guard cells. But the important thing is that these little pores, and they're actually much smaller than that, you would have to get a microscope to actually see them. They're called stomata, or one individual of these pores or holes are called, is called a stoma. And this is where the oxygen and the carbon or mainly the carbon dioxide, but this is where the air enters the cell. And this is actually where water vapor is also released from the cell. So if we draw a cross section of a leaf, so if we draw a cross section, so let me do my best to draw a cross section like this. Let me draw it like that. Maybe that's the bottom of the leaf. This would be my stoma. This is the actual opening. This is the actual opening. And uh, plants can actually open and close their stomas. And we'll talk a little, or their stomata. I shouldn't say stomas. The plural of stoma is stomata. They can open and close their stomata. But the important thing to realize is what's going on inside the cell. 
So most plants, you have this whole photosynthetic process or photosynthesis process occurring in these mesophyll cells, which are really just these middle layer cells. And I'll do a detailed video in the future about uh, the anatomy of a plant. But these are the mesophyll cells. This is where photosynthesis normally occurs, mesophyll. And because they use carbon dioxide or they need air, there's actually, actually I drew it wrong. Let me draw it a little bit better. There's actually space between them so that air can get to them. So there's mesophyll, mesophyll. I'm doing a very rough drawing. But in this situation, air can enter through a stoma. And then it can fill these, the, the space between these mesophyll cells. And it can provide air to the mesophyll cells. And when I say air, that air is made up of carbon dioxide and oxygen and nitrogen, all of the things that are in our air. And of course, it needs the carbon dioxide to actually perform the Calvin cycle. Now. We just said that you know it's not just getting CO2. If it was just getting CO2, you wouldn't worry about photorespiration. It's also getting oxygen. It's also getting molecular oxygen. So what can the plant do to prevent this? And not all plants, you know, most plants just deal with photorespiration. It's just a little less efficient than the ideal. But some plants have, I guess we could say, evolved past the photorespiration problem. And these are called C4 plants. Or another or C or they perform C4 photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. And we'll understand hopefully in a few minutes why it's called C4. And just as a reminder, when we go up to the mechanism up here, classic Calvin cycle, the first byproduct is this phosphoglycerate. This is a three carbon chain. So it's saying that the the first time that you fix carbon dioxide, or actually the first time you fix carbon dioxide or oxygen, but let's say the first time you fix carbon dioxide, you end up with a three carbon chain molecule. That's why this is called C3 photosynthesis. So that's a clue. On C4 plants, the very first time that they fix carbon dioxide, they must end up with a four carbon molecule. And what they do, and this is the interesting thing, is you have all your mesophyll you have all your mesophyll cells that are out here they're getting air they're getting carbon dioxide you know they're getting carbon dioxide and they're getting oxygen and whatever else so you have all your mesophyll cells that are getting air but you also have cells that are deeper within more embedded within the leaf that aren't being exposed to directly to the air coming through the stomata and so you have these bundle sheet cells and these are actually the cells that surround you know the the actual the actual pipes in the plant that that distribute the fluid up and down the plant and we'll do a whole video on the anatomy of the plant i really just want you to understand what's going on in c4 photosynthesis so you have these other cells that are more embedded they they don't have direct access to the air so these are bundle sheet cells bundle sheet and what these plants do is the carbon dioxide comes in. So in, in the standard Calvin cycle, everything happens in the mesophyll cells, and you have to deal with photorespiration. In your C4 plants, or your plants performing C4 photosynthesis, what happens is, is that the carbon dioxide comes in. So this is in the mesophyll cell. Let me be neat about it. So in our mesophyll, in our mesophyll cell, mesophyll, that's that right there. You have CO2 coming in, and it reacts. Instead of reacting with RuP or ribulose biphosphate, it reacts with another very hairy sounding compound. We'll just call it PEP, but it's phosphenol pyruvate. So that's PEP. And just you just have to remember, it is a three carbon. It is a three carbon chain. Now let me write down the word just because sometimes you might want to know, you know, what does what does PEP stand for? It's phosphenol phenol pyruvate or phosphenol pyruvic acid. Either way, pyruvate. Three carbon molecule. It's got other stuff hanging off of this, but we just have to remember the carbons. So when these two react, what are you going to end up with? Well you could guess. You're going to end up you have one carbon, you have three carbons. You're going to end up with a four carbon molecule. You're going to end up with a four carbon molecule. And this, this reaction right here is facilitated not by Rubisco, ribulose biphosphate, oxy, carboxylase, oxygenase, all. It's fa facilitated by a different enzyme. And this is the key. This is the key for C. So this is a different enzyme. This is called PEP carboxylase. Let me write it down. 
Pep. Pep carboxylase, and that's a fitting name. Remember, Rubisco or ribulose biphosphate carboxylase, it reacted ribulose biphosphate with carbon. Now, or oxygen, that's where that oxygenase comes from. But now we have something that reacts PEP, our phosphenol pyruvate, with carbon dioxide. So it's called PEP carboxylase. Actually, this is carboxylase, not carboxylate. Carboxylase. It's an enzyme. This is PEP carboxylase. And what's special about PEP carboxylase and why it's useful in preventing photorespiration is that it can only fix carbon. It can only fix carbon, not not oxygen. So you can imagine, this is occurring in the mesophyll cell. You have oxygen and carbon dioxide running around here. But only, only carbon dioxide can react with the PEP via the PEP carboxylase. So then you, they react. They, they actually produce oxaloacetic acid or oxaloacetate. Oxalo, let me write that. Oxalo acetate and you might remember this from the Krebs cycle this was what this was the thing that was the first reactive species in our Krebs cycle so all of these molecules you know they there are they, they keep showing up in our in our chemical pathways and that's interesting if, if you find that type of thing interesting but the important thing is that they form oxaloacetate then oxaloacetate gets converted converted let me make it I made this not as neatly as I would like to but then that gets converted to either malate or aspartate, but these are all four carbon molecules. They're a little different. They're going to have different oxygens and hydrogens hanging off of them. But this is either malate or, or aspartate. Did I just say carboxylase? No, it's going to form either malate or aspartate. Most books will just say, oh, it'll, it'll eventually uh, uh, just form into malate only. And then this. This malate will then essentially react to produce carbon dioxide. And you're like, wait, that, that, that doesn't make sense. I have carbon dioxide. It gets fixed in oxaloacetic acid. And then it gets turned into malate or aspartate. And then later, I'm going to turn into carbon dioxide again. What's the whole point? And this is the key. This is, this, is, this is the whole crux of the issue. So now this malate is going to be converted back into PEP and carbon dioxide. And you're like, what was the whole point of this whole reaction? I just ended up with carbon dioxide and PEP again. I'm just going in circles. But the neat thing about this, and the reason why this prevents photorespiration, is that this part, this part of the reaction, right here, maybe I should do it like this, this part of the reaction occurs in the mesophyll cell. It occurs up here. It occurs over here in the mesophyll cell. So you have this malate. And then the malate actually gets transferred into these bundle sheet cells. So the malate gets tra transferred into the bundle sheet cells via little tubes that connect the cells called plasmodesmata. Sounds like the name of a, a horror movie. So let me draw this. Let me draw this a little bit neater. So over here, you have with exposure to the air, with exposure to the air, you have your mesophyll cell. Right, air is coming in, O2, CO2, everything is coming in, but only CO2 can be fixed with PEP. So you have the PEP here, the phosphenol pyruvate. So you have your PEP here. PEP only CO2 can be reacted with PEP because of the PEP carboxylase. The PEP carboxylase. This is the enzyme that's operating. So this is much more specific than the ribulose biphosphate carboxylase, or the Rubisco. So PEP carboxylase. So the oxygen just gets ignored, even though it's hanging around these mesophyll cells. And then these, this gets converted, oxaloacetic acid, and then to malate. But once it gets converted to malate, the malate gets transferred deeper into deeper into the actual cell via these plasmodesmata. So this might be budding right up against right up against a bundle sheet cell that's deeper in the cell. This bundle sheet cell has no access to oxygen, right? So the malate comes in, you have these little pipes that connect the cell. Maybe I'll just draw one pipe. Actually, so let's say there's one pipe. 
So the malate can come here. And then within this deeper cell, within this bundle sheath cell, bundle sheath, it can then react to form carbon dioxide and pyruvate. And then the pyruvate, so let's say and this is the pyruvate. And but that pyruvate can then later go back to actually form the PEP again. So this can go back through your plasmodesmata and form the PEP. So the whole value here is now in the bundle sheet cell, I have an environment that only has carbon dioxide. I have no oxygen here. I, I was able to essentially select for the carbon dioxide outside or uh, closer to the air in the mesophyll cell. And now that I'm deeper within the, within the plant, I'm in an environment that only has CO2 because I've already selected for it. And now I can perform the Calvin cycle. So now, inside this deeper cell, inside this bundle sheet cell, I can fix the carbon dioxide with the ribulose biphosphate using Rubisco, just like we learned in the original Calvin cycle. And we have the whole cycle, and we produce our sugars. We produce our phosphoglyceraldehydes, or our, you know, PGALs, whatever you want to call them. And the whole value of this is that we were able to avoid the photorespiration problem, because now the Calvin cycle is occurring in an environment that only has carbon dioxide. And I think I already mentioned it, but this is called C4 photosynthesis. C4 photosynthesis. And it's an adaption to essentially make sure that you don't waste, waste cycles of your Calvin cycle by photo through photorespiration. And of course, it was called C4. Because the first time that carbon gets fixed, it doesn't happen in the Calvin cycle. It happens up here with PEP carboxylase, and it gets fixed with PEP into a 4-carbon chain. And that's why it's called C4 uh, uh, photosynthesis.